is a party inside my city, yeah. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Remember, subscribe is the vibe, my boy. Your boy's on the road to 4K. Humbly. Humbly. We back with another one, man. We got the new information found on John Moran could be bad. Uh, for those of you guys that's been living underneath the rock, John Moran is possibly facing a year suspension for brandishing a gun on IG Live. It was the second time he did it in a matter of two months. Like I told you guys in my last video, John Moran is redefining what a new fool means. This is the era in which we're living in. And like I said, I'm a dude. I hold people accountable. Like a lot of y'all crying. Yo, why they crashing down on Ja? Why they won't let Ja live? It's Ja's right to brandish a gun. And it's like, this is why I don't argue with stupidity. Because from a distance, Distance, we don't know who's who and i refuse to debate with shit like this at the end of the day john Morant is worth about 300 million dollars he has 200 million coming in potentially he just can't keep his act together and his act is brandishing guns and making it seem like he tough or making it seem like he about that and in the nba they don't care for that they don't care for it they don't care for what it represents they don't care that you're just having a good time or it's your right at the end of the day you play on their platform and they make the rules so it's no knock at you john Morant fans i don't think all of you guys are dumb but a lot of you guys try to ignore the obvious and when you understand business you understand that you can't have anybody anybody it doesn't matter what your fandom is or what your star power allows you to do to go against the shield you can't be out here brandishing guns and making it seem like it ain't nothing out here even though he ain't hurting nobody and pointing at, at anyone besides himself because apparently you know john Morant can only hold a gun up in the air nowadays so i get all that but at the end of the day you have an image to uphold and they have a business to maintain and you got to understand they will make an example out of you they don't care they just don't I, I just don't get why fans don't understand that i'm a firm believer that at the end of the day john moran has to live on the bed that he's made for himself and now they're talking about toy gun <laughs> we out here shooting water at the ops now it's a toy gun stop the cap but we're gonna get into the new information brought on john moran because it could be bad appreciate y'all hit the like button Unless you're a John Morant fan, you just don't like me, man. Sounds personal. Yesterday, when John ja Morant was chanting Grizzlies in seven and was talking all that trash to Steph Curry in the playoffs. I liked it, it felt though. Like it was just yesterday when John ja Morant was saying he wanted the Warriors on Christmas Day and was going back and forth with Draymond Green on Twitter. And yet, here we are today with Morant facing possibly one of the biggest suspensions in NBA history. Then, to make things worse, here's a clip of what Stephen A. Smith had to say recently. But I can tell you this, I'm from the streets of New York City. Cap. And a lot of players I know are from the streets, period. And I can tell you that people within the NBA community are not just concerned about John ja Morant playing basketball. They're concerned about whether or not he's going to be alive in five years. Not alive in five years? Not alive in five years. Man, guys. How the heck in the world did it get to this? Things just went from bad to worse in the blink of an eye, and uh, I truly hope the best for John Morant. I mean, I truly wish for him to get back to the NBA so he could get swept by the Warriors in the first round. <laughs> but at the moment, forget about the hardwood floor, forget about basketball. Things don't look good at all for the once promising superstar. And bro, here's the double-edged sword, because I could be real with you guys, right? The thing that we love most about John Moran outside of his athletic ability is that he's relatable on the court. Like, he represents the new culture, the NBA young boy, the music, the hair, you know what I mean? The locks, the attitude, the it's me against everybody. If you're not on our side, stay over there. He represents the culture, and that's what these kids and young adults are spewing nowadays. It's easy for us to gravitate towards John Moran because he... He reminds us of us, you know what I mean? He looks like us. But it's like the one thing that that separates him from being a company man is also his biggest kryptonite. That's the reason why he's getting these sneaker deals, bro. Like the reason we buying his sneakers and Nike's willing to shell out 100 mil for his new kicks is because he has the culture. But the part of having the culture is the fact that he does listen to NBA Youngboy. It's the fact that he does tote that thing. Like you got rappers mentioning John Morant in their music. Like he's embraced. Nobody's really knocking him outside of people that really care about his, you know, his finances. You know what I mean? So the one thing that makes him great and the one thing that makes him iconic is the fact that he's so relatable to us. And he's growing up right in front of our eyes, embracing the culture that we all kind of embrace. But against the shield, it's like, damn, it's so crazy because the NBA is profiting off the mere fact that this is John Morant's image. You know what I mean? Stay over there. There's a party inside my... The NBA is profiting off of that. They're like, yo, keep coming up with your slogans. We'll make t-shirts. Know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, we'll keep making your jerseys. Keep doing all that. But the moment you start toting guns, which is, again, a part of the culture, that's when they want to, you know, try to cut ties, which is like, it's, it's kind of fake in a sense because the NBA profits regardless. But sometimes you got to cut your nose to spite your face. 
because you got you got to keep him in check. So if you haven't heard yet, John ja Morant's camp recently came out and said the weapon in the Instagram live was just a toy and that it wasn't real at all. And here's what was recently said on the topic from The Breakfast Club. My sources say that the relative in the car in the back seat had a toy gun in the car. The gun is not real and was playing around with it, passed it over to Ja, and that got caught on the line. He had it in his hand. Now the video was sent to uh, Adam Silver, NBA, allegedly. They have it and they said the gun looks extremely fake. Like it's obviously a toy gun. But uh, according to my source, allegedly, uh, Adam Silver is still going to go through with the suspension looking like it should be about 30 games, even though they know it is a toy gun. Even though they know. So based on this clip and the recent reports I've seen, whether or not it was a toy doesn't seem to matter to the league because of the image it presents. One question I have on this whole episode, though, is why the heck would they wait one full month to come out and say it was a toy? Why'd they let this get so big before coming out and saying it was, quote unquote, a toy? But anyway, as for the suspension, no one really knows the true length of it yet because Adam Silver himself recently stated that they came to the conclusion that it'd be really unfair and disrespectful to the NBA Finals if the whole talking point currently was on John Morant. Hey, hey whoa, disrespectful to what? You see what you see what the Denver Nuggets is doing to the Heat? Yo, listen, John Morant's off the field issue is more entertaining than the NBA Finals. Trust me, y'all ain't disrespecting nothing. Shit. Like, I guarantee you John Morant's suspension will have more views than the NBA Finals, man. Shit look like a mismatch. Just cut it out. But from every source I've read and heard about regarding the issue, it's not going to be lenient. And in fact, if it was lenient, then I'm sure Adam Silver wouldn't have had a problem just announcing it right there and then. You're about to get the Ron Artest treatment. Likely means that it's going to make headlines. I mean, as of the moment, popular sports analysis Shannon Sharp recently went on air to say that he believes the league wants to make an example of Ja Morant to dissuade any future NBA players from doing something similar, and this sentiment was also backed up by the executives around the league. Anyway, some sources online say the suspension is going to be about 30 games, some sources say it's going to be a bit longer at 41 games. But as a repeat offender, it actually might be even longer than that. Now, what I mean by that is, we all remember who OJ Mayo is, right? Well, in case you don't, here's a quick refresher. Not if he you was 12. the third overall pick back in 2008. He was hyped up to be the next LeBron, but in the end, he was mostly remembered for his failed trash next talk hole? against Michael Jordan. <laughs> but that's another story for another day. And back to the point. In 2010, Mayo was found to have violated the league's anti-drug program and consequently was suspended 10 games. Well, in the 2016 offseason, about six years later, Mayo was once again found to have violated the league's anti-drug program. And guess how long his suspension was as a repeat offender? It wasn't 10 games. It wasn't 20 games. It wasn't 30 or 41 games. It was two years. 164 games. Sheesh. That was actually a longer suspension than Ron Artest in the Malice at the Palace incident. That was actually a longer suspension than Latrell Sprewell for attacking then Warriors head coach PJ Carlissimo. And then. Goddamn, was, was this man supplying the country with, with coke or something? OJ Mayo. Why are they treating this man like he Pablo Escobar? Was actually longer than Gilbert Arenas for the 2009 incident when he carried and stored an unlicensed weapon in his locker. He had to These be serving the block. These are actually the longest suspensions in NBA history. And where does John Morant fit into this whole picture, you might ask? Oh, man. Well, just like OJ Mayo, he's now a repeat offender for violating one of the NBA's policies. And uh, when Adam Silver recently went on air to discuss this topic more, he stated... So in, in, in assessing um, what discipline is appropriate, if that's the case, um, we look at both the history of prior acts, but then we look at the individual player's history as well. And, and the seriousness, of course, of the conduct. So those are all things that get factored. Um, it's, it's not an exact science. It comes down to judgment at the end of the day. Um, on the part of me and my colleagues in the league office. So uh, Silver specifically said that they'll look at the history of prior acts, but the thing is, looking at the history of Morant's acts makes things pretty darn bleak. I mean, there's that incident at the mall with the security guard. I ain't gonna hold you. 
I was not thinking two years, right? I wasn't thinking two years, but when you start to look at the resume, know what I mean? Like John Morant the past year has been involved in some shit. Y'all, even you John Morant apologists, y'all gotta keep it a bean. He's been involved in some, like, all right, bro. Like, all right, why are you punching a 17 year old? You know what I mean? Like, why y'all point the, the laser that y'all pointed at the Pacers staff, that could have just been a laser from a pen. It didn't have, yo, I'm just saying. It's not like it's just one isolated issue. It's like seven, bro. Oh, my God. I wasn't thinking two years. I was probably thinking half a season or a year, but... Woo-wee! Then there's that incident with the 17-year-old. I can't then deny this. that incident with the Pacers staff. And then there was the incident with him at the adult entertainment business showing off a weapon and scaring the dancers there. If OJ Mayo was suspended that. two years for two incidents that were six years apart, then it doesn't look good for Morant, who did all this in the span of like a year. You know, recently there was a poll online in the Grizzlies subreddit about how long users believe Morant will be suspended for. Irrelevant. And a whopping 2,000 voters, which is nearly half of all the poll participants, believe that the Grizzlies superstar will be out for one full year. Man, guys. This could derail Morant's career quite significantly, and to be honest, the only thing saving Ja right now is his star power. Like, for example, when Gilbert Arenas was suspended for his weapon incident in Washington, he actually had a teammate who did the same thing. Javaris Crittenton was his name, but unlike Arenas, Javaris wasn't an all-star, and as a result, for the same actions, he never played in another single NBA game. Nike also went ahead and confirmed his star power. I mean, when the news of all this broke, they immediately removed his shoe line from the website. Like, overnight, people just couldn't buy Morant's shoes anymore. But then, about a week later, despite all the negative publicity surrounding Morant, Nike suddenly released Morant's latest signature shoe called Hunger. And guess what? It sold out within minutes. It's a business. Yo, like, <laughs> oh my God, son. Yo, these businesses be so fake and and the the ignorant fools the fans that just think certain things it's bottom line dollar even when they canceled his sneaker you got to understand from a business perspective john morant is a superstar you know the fact that he signed underneath your label or your business he's gonna bring you millions because he brings a fan base so if john morant does something dumb these dudes they're gonna do the pc thing like yo you know what to punish john morant we're gonna cancel his sneaker even though we know we're cutting ourselves five million ten million dollars easily you know what I'm saying? So they're going to think like, you know what? Because this is hot right now, let, let's let's act like we're with the cause. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, we're against gun violence. That's why we're taking the shoes off, off our website. Two days later. But we're going to release these, though. You know what I'm saying? We, you can't get the originals, but you can get these Hunger Games. You know what I'm saying? But we still mad at Ja. You know what I mean? Just give us your money. They don't give a damn about no gun charges. This is PC at its finest. You guys got to understand these multi-billion dollar corporations... They, they, they don't become billion dollar corporations by, by just accepting defeat and giving money away. These, these sneakers cost money to make <laughs> and the intentions is to sell them for a hundred percent of the money that they put into them. You know what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it a bean, son. They paying like $5 at a, at a sweatshop in China to make these John Moran sneakers that y'all about to pay $150 for. But I ain't say it. Let me chill out. Let me chill out. You know, the feds is listening. We all know the NBA is a business, and as of the moment, Morant is arguably the most marketable Gen Z hooper in the world, and that's where everything stands at the moment. The NBA both loves and hates him at the same time, so Facts. they're trying to find the balance of delivering a punishment and keeping the business stable. But anyway, on to the other point that's actually more serious, which was brought up by Stephen A. Smith, who said that according to his sources, people aren't just worried about Ja Morant returning to play basketball that they're instead worried about his life. Honestly, I don't know what to make of that, but if that's the actual case, Morant needs help immediately. I mean, remember what happened and is still happening at the moment to Delonte West? He was once the starting point guard next to a prime LeBron James, but these days, the man is homeless and is wandering the streets looking unrecognizable. Now, Morant's probably not going to become homeless anytime soon, but he needs to really stop this downward Ever. spiral that he's in before it reaches the next level. I mean, who are these guys that are hanging around him destroying his career and life? 
from pointing a laser that was on top of a weapon at Pacer's staff to allowing him to bring a weapon into an adult entertainment business to handing him a weapon when they were live on social media. Morant really needs to change the people that are surrounding him. Otherwise, Stephen A. Smith's sources may be right, and it's only a matter of time before these incidents increase in terms of intensity. Anyway, we're all waiting for the NBA's release of whatever punishment they conclude is fit for Morant, but I, for one, hope he turns his life around and returns to his superstar role in the NBA. I mean, I need the Grizzlies to get swept by the Warriors. Heck, I need Dylan Dynasty Brooks to somehow get reacquired by the Grizzlies too, because sweeping them without Brooks wouldn't be as sweet. Yo, let me tell you something, bro. Like, I, I just hated the narrative of him saying, who are these guys that are ruining John Morant's career? <laughs> the only person ruining John Morant's career is John Morant. I don't know why we're in this space where we refuse to hold this guy accountable, and it's the people around him. It's the influence. It's the music. Both of the cases in which we're highly talking about, right? Him at, in the strip club. Wasn't it him holding the gun to his face, smiling on IG Live? Was there any friends near him when he was doing that? Or what about the second gun situation where his friend is on IG and what does John Morant do while driving? John Morant picks up the, the Nerf gun and he's the one brandishing it. There's a party inside my city, yeah! Isn't that all John Morant's doing? Why are we trying to blame his friends? Why are we trying to blame the, his environment? Why do we have such a hard time believing this is just who John Morant is? It's like when guys become superstars, they try to rebrand them into becoming someone that they're not. LeBron James didn't have to be prepped to be who he is internally. That's just who he is. And it just so happened to fall right in line with the NBA. He's not a dude that's going to be in off the field issues. He's not a dude that's going to be involved with drugs or the police or domestic violence. That's just not who LeBron is. John Morant is a grown man. Oh, he's childish. But at the end of the day, he's a grown man who makes his own decisions. The man is worth $100 million. Who's he listening to? If he wanted to cut these people off, he would have. The thing is, he doesn't want to. Why? Because they're his friends. Those are his peeps. That's his clique. They grew up together. They're from the same environment. He is a product of the environment that he was raised in. This is who John Morant is. Things aren't just happening to this mofo. He's making these decisions. Do I live underneath the rock? But nonetheless, let me know in the comment section what you think is going to happen, man. Listen, um, I'm, I'm, I'm all for holding him accountable, but I, mean, I ain't going to suspend that man for two years. I don't think the NBA going to do that neither. You know how much money the NBA would lose if they suspended John Morant for two years? Come on now. Come on now. We're not trying to be a brokey, bruv. We're not trying to be a brokey. They're going to send a message, and that message going to be thick, but he'll be all right. And if not, then he's going to crash out. And he ain't going to have no one to blame but himself. Stop blaming his parents and, and his circle. It's John Morant that's doing these things, bruh. What's wrong with y'all? Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Hit the like button because you know Gabbo's going to keep it a bean. Y'all may not want to hear it, but someone got to say it. Mumbo, I'm gone.